year student today we'll discuss about the aerobic respiration aerobic respiration is the oxidation of aerobic substances like the oxidation of organic substances like glucose into co2 and h2 and during this oxidation the energy is converted in the form of atp it is called aerobic respiration and this aerobic respiration it completes in three important steps that is glycolysis link function krebs cycle and electron transport system glycolysis and krebs cycle are linked by the link reaction during glycolysis and link reaction the synthesis of nadh takes place when this nadh undergo oxidation it synthesizes atp in electron transport system likewise the same way in during krebs cycle nadh and fadh to synthesize and when they undergo oxidation to the electron transport system they release the energy and this energy is conserved in the form of atp these three steps we are going to study in our this today we'll discuss about glycolysis what is glycolysis glyco means the glucose lysis means breakdown glycolysis it is the partial breakdown of glucose into two molecules of pyruvic acid by the sequential enzymatic chain enzymatic steps it is called glycolysis the discovery of this glycolysis was carried out by three experts that is mtn barrett and farnell therefore glycolysis is also known as cmp farnell but before the glycolysis the discovery of anaerobic respiration that is fermentation were studied by different different scientists one of the scientists was the buckner buckner he had studied the conversion of glucose into ethanol he yeast extract the same free extract of the yeast it converts glucose into ethanol that is ethyl alcohol that we have studied by buckner the first enzymatic reaction that takes place of likewise hans von wiener chaplin he had studied the same type of reaction the glycolysis like reaction in muscle cell and these glycolysis reactions are very similar to the emp pathway mtn and marhof studied this glycolysis in yeast extract as well as farnell also studied this reaction but miller chaplin studied glycolysis in muscle cell this glycolysis is the fundamental process that takes place in all living organisms that is in prokaryotes as well as eukaryotes where does this glycolysis occur glycolysis it takes place in cytoplasm of the cell the different group of organism in their cytoplasm glycolysis is carried out whether it is parasites or autotrophic organisms the human rbc cetacea solium yeast cell different bats different bacteria and muscle cell they show the glycolysis these are the anaerobic respiratory likewise the plants and as well as animals they also perform the glycolysis in their cytoplasm the cells of bacteria cells of plants as well as animals perform glycolysis in their cytoplasm this glycolysis in case of plant and animal the substrate utilized is different one but the basic substance required for glycolysis is the 6 carbon containing glucose 
the different amino acids and different types of sugar present in animals can enter into the glycolysis in the form of different intermediates of glycolysis process. Likewise, in case of plant, the transporting sugar is sucrose, and this sucrose, when drops down, it produces the glucose and fructose, and this glucose becomes the fundamental substrate for glycolysis. Now, here you can see the major pathways in which the glucose acts as a fundamental substrate. In case of aerobic reaction or aerobic respiration, the glucose is the basic substrate, as well as for anaerobic respiration, it acts as a fundamental subunit of energy. The glycogen, starch, and sucrose. Their synthesis is takes place from glucose. The life ones, the glucose, when it undergoes pentose phosphate pathway, it produces the ribose sugar, and this ribose is utilized for the synthesis of DNA and RNA nucleotides. In this way, glucose is the central sugar, central molecule that participates in different, different pathways, in different, different reactions. Before going to start the glycolysis, how does the entry of different types of carbohydrates in glycolysis is takes place, you can see here. The polysaccharides like glycogen starch here, they can enter into the Glycolysis intermediate. Now, this rectangle it says the glucose 6 phosphate, fructose 6 phosphate, fructose 1 with this phosphate, likewise. Further, these are the intermediates of glycolysis. The different polysaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, they enter in glycolysis in different, in the form of different, different intermediates. The glycogen present in Animals and starch present in plants, they broken down into glucose one phosphate by the enzyme, by the respective enzyme. Glycogen is broken down into glucose one phosphate by glycogen phosphorylase enzyme present in glucose. Then glucose one phosphate it is converted into glucose six phosphate by the methane enzyme. Likewise, the starch. It broken down into glucose one phosphate by the starch phosphorylase enzyme. Starch branching enzyme they help in this conversion. In the form of glucose one phosphate, this glycogen starch they enter in glycolysis process. Then this one is a chain of glycogen enzyme. This consists of the subunits of alpha 1 4 glycoside is bound in chain of glucose circulation. The breaking down of glycogen and starch for the entry into the, gly into the gly gly glycolysis is takes place from non reducing end. From this non reducing end, one by one, is the pyranose chain, the pyranose structure of glucose is broken down. From non reducing site. Then the disaccharides like lactose, trehalose, and sucrose, they also enter in the form of different intermediates of glycolysis. Lactose, it is the disaccharide and consists of galactose and glucose. They are formed by, this lactose is formed by. The glycosidic beta 1 4 glycosidic bonding between galactose and glucose. After breaking down of the lactose, it produces the galactose and glucose. This lactase enzyme is broken down lactose into glucose and galactose. Then this galactose it enters into the glycolysis via reducing galactose into glucose. Glucose and phosphate. But this glucose 
it is the basic substrate for glycolysis directly import into the glycol. Then second one is the trihalose disaccharide sugar. It is formed by yes by the formation of alpha one four alpha one one glycosidic bond between the when trihalose enzyme break down this trihalose, it produces two glucose, and this glucose enter in the glycolysis process. Sucrose is the non reducing sugar formed by the glycosidic bonding, one to glycos glycosidic bonding between the glucose and fructose. Fructose is the pyramid sugar, and glucose is the pyramid sugar. Pyranose is the sixth, yes, it is the sixth member ring, while pyranose sugar is the five member ring. Now, after the breaking of sucrose, it produces galactose and fructose, galactose, sorry, glucose and fructose, glucose it enters into the glycolysis directly, but fructose it enters in the form of fructose rich phosphate. Likewise, the <laughs> this mannose sugar, it is the epimers of glucose, then this mannose sugar it enters into the glycolysis via mannose six phosphate. Mannose six phosphate is the isomer of fructose six phosphate. Mannose is the yes it is the epimer of fructose and glucose. These are the entry of glycogen starch, different disaccharides and monosaccharides into the glycolysis. <coughs> then, the glycolysis process it completes in ten enzymatic reactions. It starts from the glucose and heads at the two molecules of pyruvic acid that contain three carbon. The glycolysis process is complete in two different phase, preparatory phase and payoff phase. The preparatory phase, it involves the consumption of two ATPs, the breaking down of six carbon into two molecules of three carbon containing different sugar. The preparatory phase, it is the basic phase of glycolysis. While the payoff phase, it involves the oxidation and substrate level phosphorylation. It ends with the formation of two molecules of pyruvic acid. The preparatory phase in study about this one. In this preparatory phase, glucose is converted into glucose 6 phosphate in the presence of enzyme interfiling. And here, the consumption of ATP is possible. It is the weight limiting state of glycolysis as well as irreversible state. Glucose 6 phosphate is converted into isomer fructose 6 phosphate in the presence of enzyme phosphohexylase or phosphohexyl isomer. The fructose 6 phosphate it consumes the one ATP. In the presence of enzyme phosphofructokinase force and form the fructose one six this phosphate. This is the second rate limiting state and well as irreversible state of glycolysis. This is a fructose six phosphate, fructose one six this phosphate is converted into broken down into three carbon containing PGAL and DHA. Three phosphoglyceraldehyde is a three carbon aldose sugar, while dihydroxyacetone is the three carbon containing keto sugar. These two are the smallest carbon containing sugar. Now, the fructose, the six carbon, it is broken down into the glyceraldehyde three phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate in the presence of enzyme aldose. This reaction is also called as cleavage. Now, the first reaction is called as phosphorylation of glucose. 
Second reaction we can call is isomerization of glucose. Third reaction is called the phosphorylation. Second, the third reaction, the fourth reaction we call as the bridge. That is the breaking of fructose one six this phosphate into PGAL and DHA. Out of these two, these two three carbon content. Here it is the only PGAL that participates in further reaction. Now, as I told you earlier, preparatory phase it involves the conversion of the two ATP in reaction number one and reaction number third. The conversion of ATP is carried out, and the second important stage that the second important steps that occur during preparatory phase is broken down of six carbon into the two molecules of three carbon containing PGAL and DHA. These are the two important steps of preparatory phase. The further reaction is carried out by glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. In the fifth step, the dihydroxyacetone phosphate it is converted into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate because the further reaction of glycolysis is carried out by glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate not by dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Therefore, dihydroxyacetone phosphate is converted into glyceraldehyde phosphate. In this way, we have the two molecules of glyceraldehyde phosphate. Now, after this reaction number five, the payoff stage starts here. During payoff phase, as I told you earlier, during this payoff phase, oxidation substrate level phosphorylation and synthesis of two molecules of pyridic acid is carried out. Now we study about this way of phase. During way of phase, as I told you, this is the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate that participates further reactions of glycolysis. Glyceraldehyde undergoes the oxidative phosphorylation and form 1, 3, 5, 1,3-diphosphoglycerate or this phosphoglycerate. This is the old term. Now here, aldehyde is this conversation. Aldehyde after oxidation to form the acid. 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. This reaction, number 6, is called the oxidation and phosphorylation reaction. And this reaction is carried out by the glyceraldehyde phosphate. 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, it undergoes substrate level phosphorylation. There are two substrate level phosphorylation takes place during the oxidosis. The first substrate level phosphorylation is takes place at state level 7. 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate in the presence of enzyme phosphoglycerate binds, it forms 3 phosphoglycerate. The phosphate from this substrate it is given to ADP and form adenosine triphosphate. As I told you earlier, the two, two molecules of this static participate here. Therefore, each of the constituent of further reaction is written twice. Then this 3 phosphoglycerate it is converted into its isomer in the H reaction. H reaction is the isomerization process. The 3 phosphoglycerate is converted into 2 phosphoglycerate. <coughs> And this reaction is carried out by the enzyme phosphoglycerate reduce. And this reaction has very most important significance in RPC cell. The conversion of 3 phosphoglycerate into 2 phosphoglycerate is carried out by, is carried out via the intermediate product that is 2, 3, this phosphoglycerate. In RBC, this reaction is text based and this reaction it is very most significant in the binding, the binding affinity of oxygen with hemoglobin. As I know, as we know that the single hemoglobin it competitively points with four, four oxygen molecules. Now this graph shows the normal curve. Okay, this is the normal oxygen dissociation curve of hemoglobin. The binding capacity of oxygen with the hemoglobin. It is studied with the normal oxygen dissociation curve. Now, when the concentration of 
contributes most to this rate is in RTC. This normal curve is shift to the right. Means the oxygen binding capacity of hemoglobin is decreased. It's an important point. In this graph, you can see that when the viscous of this rate is 8 millimolar at that time, here this new color dye shift it is the it is it affect the binding of oxygen in the hemoglobin. Then when the 5 millimolar at that time, when the concentration of this phosphate, two three this phosphate, this rate is five millimolar, it is the normal value present in RTC. So the normal concentration of two three this phosphate, this rate is five millimolar. At that time, the normal binding of oxygen with the hemoglobin is carried out. When the this phosphate, this rate is zero millimolar, at that time you can see the hyperbolic curve can be seen. In this way, this phosphorus rate it affect on oxygen binding with hemoglobin. Now, <clears throat> the two phosphorus rate it undergo the dehydration process and form phosphoenol pyruvic acid. Phosphoenol pyruvic acid it undergo the substrate level phosphorylation cycle and form two molecules of pyruvic. In this way, from one single from one single glucose molecule, the synthesis of two molecules of pyruvic acid is carried out via preparatory phase and payoff phase of glycolysis. Now, what is the equation for glycolysis? Here you can see this single glucose molecule. Under glycolysis produces the two pyruvic acid. During this, one oxidation is carried out that converts NAD into NADH. The two substrate phosphorylation they produce the two ATP. The net gain of ATP for the glycolysis is two. Then, what is the pyrogenic of respiration for glycolysis process? Here, we are using the one mole of glucose molecule. Then, in this EMP pathway, the ADP form at a substrate level phosphorylation are total number R4. As we studied earlier, these are the two important steps where the ATP synthesis is carried out. The step number seven and step number two, they participate in substrate, they involve the substrate level phosphorylation and produce the total four ATPs. Out of these four ADPs formed in the glycolysis here, the ATP produced via electron transport system by the oxidation of NADH. Here you can see the NADH is produced by the oxidation of this hydrate 3 phosphate into 1 3 this phosphate is rate. While this reaction number 6, here the synthesis of two molecules of NADH to take place. When this NADH2 undergo the oxidative phosphorylation process, it produces the 2 to 3 ATPs. Later on, we'll study about the shutters that participate in the oxidation of NADH and FAD. The NADH, when it, can, when it participates in oxidative phosphorylation, to visceral phosphate shuttle, it produces two ATPs. When NADH2 passing through the aspartate malate, malate aspartate shuttle, at that time, from one NADH2 oxidation, the three ATP molecule produces. That we will study later about the visceral phosphate shuttle and malate aspartate shuttle. From this one phosphate shuttle, NADH2 undergoes oxidation and produces two ATPs. Through the malate aspartate shuttle, the single NADH produces three ATPs. Therefore, you can write four ATP for this one phosphate shuttle and six ATP for malate aspartate shuttle in Arabic description. The total number of ATP consumed are two. In the 
bench number one and bench number three, we can see the consumption of ATP is sixpence in preparatory phase. And total number of ATP after the consumption is six or eight. And the net gain of ATP, if we consider, it is two net gain of ATP, say, to the subject level phosphorylation. But the total number of ATP are six or eight. Now, this is all about the first uh, glycolysis process. The next thing is what happened after the glycolysis? What happened with the paritic acid? The paritic acid after glycolysis, it follows the different different processes in different different and abiotic conditions. And this paritic acid undergo aerobic condition, aerobic respiration, it totally broken down into carbon dioxide to the citric acid cycle, that is the Krebs cycle. But in low oxygen concentration or anaerobic condition, like in case of yeast cell, it produces the ethanol. We call it as alcohol fermentation, ethanol fermentation. In case of muscles, when the oxygen deficiency process at the time, at higher extraneous exercise, this paralytic acid it is converted into two lactic acid molecules without forming the carbon dioxide. Now, <clears throat> this reaction is takes place in heterocyte in case of in case of muscles as well. Now this is the fate of fate of uh, paritic acid after glycolysis. Now remember this slide. Paritic acid it may follow either of any of these three different processes. Now after this we study about the link reaction and the Krebs cycle. Thank you very much.